Jesus for lunch and thank uh, Jesus. I apologise that I am possibly the only person here today uh, speaking in English. Um, I'm going to try and speak slowly to uh, help the translators. Um, I hope everything I say is uh, going to be understood by you. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Jesus for inviting me here today. Um, I was here two years ago um, at a similar event to this talking about communities of practice. Um, on this occasion, uh, I only arrived yesterday evening and I'm back to London um, this evening. So unfortunately, I haven't got any time to uh, visit your wonderful city. Um, and as uh, uh, the organizers know, I nearly never made it. Uh, my passport was at the Nigerian embassy up until yesterday and I almost um, I never made it to here, so uh, I'm grateful that I managed to get my passport back up to my Presentation, that, or the discussion today, uh, is going to really focus on the role and responsibilities of the people that are agents for connecting knowledge. And we've got different labels for these people. Uh, I think you call them the moderators, as the facilitators, community managers. So when I'm talking about these roles, I'm really talking about any of these particular labels that we give to people. The first um, question you may have, why the bunny? Um, and I wasn't sure about this, whether you have these uh, adverts in Spain about uh, the bunny and Duracell because part of those two, there's two themes in my presentation. One is about energy, so in order for these to work, whether it's drumming or walking or whatever, the battery is giving the energy. So I'm going to be talking about energy in relation to the people that act as these knowledge agents. And health, um, and actually following on from the last uh, presentation, I, I, and I picked up about the cholesterol issue, so maybe health is a is a is a, a continuing theme. And I'm going to be talking about health in relation to the health of your community. Now, I, I was responsible for the the launch of a community of practice, uh, digital community of practice platform for uh, government and local government in the UK. Uh, it was launched in 2006. Um, we've currently got 100,000 registered users across various um, local councils, agencies and government, and 1,500 individual communities of practice. That doesn't mean to say we've got 1,500 healthy communities of practice, I would think probably no more than 200. And one of the things that we've learned, having had this platform for six years, is what makes a community work, what helps people to connect and to collaborate and to share knowledge. What's the difference between the healthy communities the successful communities where there is lots of collaboration and sharing versus those that are moribund. I should add that in your packs, um, there is a paper that I wrote that I think is on uh, your blog. All that I'm going to be talking about today is actually in this paper. The first question is, what, what does a healthy community look like? Certain things will mark out a successful community. First of all, do we know what the purpose is? 
can we create a safe and trusted environment for our people to connect and collaborate? Have we got a committed group of people willing to share knowledge? We got these people, are they motivated? Um, making sure that we understand the needs of that community. Is, the, is this community that we've created uh, meeting the needs of the people that are there? Because if it isn't, they're going to go somewhere else. A clear action plan. If possible, blending face-to-face -face with online activities. And I know that's not always possible. If there's huge geographic and time differences, it's difficult to have face-to-face -face meetings. But if it's possible, it helps to have occasional meetings. And I think, you know, let me keep coming back to this concept of energy. Nurturing and sustaining this community of practice requires energy from a skilled facilitator or a moderator. And I'll say now without giving any secrets away, that is the difference between the communities that succeed, that are healthy, and those that fail and become moribund. So, first question is, how healthy is your community? And another point that I will make, which is quite important, is how do you know how healthy it is? Because you're going to need some form of measures, some analytics, to monitor how healthy that community is. And I'm using the, 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 the concept, I guess, of a patient. Here's my heartbeat. But in terms of a community, it will have a pattern. It will, it will be, um, it will be, communities are not um, active, mainly active all of the time. We're not, we're not always at those peaks. There will be times where the community rests. There is not a lot of activity. There may be a conference or an event and there's bursts of energy, people posting blogs, posting forum uh, items, asking questions. And that will be a peak. Once the conference is finished, the community may rest and come to a fairly stable state. The issue is recognising what that pattern is. Because if your pattern is it's always down here, it's very low levels of activity, it's indicative that you need to make some sort of intervention. So this concept of measurement and analytics, we spend a lot of time with our digital platform putting in place the measures that would help a community manager, facilitator or e-moderator understand how their community was operating. There's the standard things about how many people, uh, how many people contribute, the percentage of people who contribute as opposed to what we, I don't like the word lurkers, but we call people who don't contribute at all, who just absorb percentage of contributors. On this one here, it's pretty good because we've got around about a 16% contribution rate. Now if you can achieve a contribution rate of about 15 to 16%, that is very, very good. If it drops below 10%, then there needs to be, again, some sort of intervention by the e-moderator, facilitator, community manager. So having some <coughs> view of what the activity is in a community is quite important to making sure that that community stays healthy. Something else that we use, and it's free, is Google Analytics. So every community can have, it's up to the uh, e-moderator or facilitator to plug the Google Analytics in. But what the Google Analytics will do will give you an idea, again a dashboard, of how many people are visiting the sites, how many page impressions, 
how long people stay on the site. Now, you don't have to be an expert to understand Google Analytics. What you do need to understand, if you look at this uh, often enough, you will see if there is a problem. For example, if you start to see this line gradually coming down, indicating less and less activity, that gives you some clue that you need to do something. There may be a problem. So how do we keep our community healthy? I don't mean to infer from this diagram that our community needs intensive care. Um, if it's got to that point where it is moribund, then obviously perhaps it does need intensive care. But the reason I've used this diagram is because if we think of our community as a living organism, which I think it is, we need lots of equipment to monitor how healthy that organism is. We need to know what the pulse is of our, of our patient. We need to make sure that it's alive and breathing <coughs> and healthy. So all of this equipment is equivalent to what I was telling you earlier on, the Google Analytics, having the dashboard to indicate measures of contribution, measures of numbers of members, and so on. Now, you don't have to read all of that. It's in the um, it's in this paper. What I've done is give you some idea of the sorts of symptoms and what action that you can take. Now, the action doesn't have to be by any moderator or facilitator or community manager. The activity can by, be by the members themselves of that community. If people see that there is lack of engagement, people, ordinary members of the community, they too can take those actions. So, for example, uh, we've got second that activity only by a few people. So, one of the things we can do is call or email the members who haven't participated, um, find out why they haven't been participating. Don't necessarily put pressure on them but you're just trying to find out if there is a problem, um, if there is some concern they have about making any contributions, and you will make, by, by the very fact that you've contacted them, they will know that you are interested in them and what they have to say. So there's a whole range of different things that you can do based on what your symptom is. In order to know that there is a symptom, you have to have these measures in place. You have to understand your community. So this, this role we uh, I refer to as the moderator or facilitator, what is it? I've actually put a diagram of a tree there being nurtured, because I think the, this community manager or facilitator or e-moderator is doing exactly that. It is nurturing the knowledge within a community. And it's quite a difficult task. I've started in terms of platform management. Okay, if you have a digital platform, this person really ought to be uh, fully aware of how to use that platform, what tools are available, what tools might be needed to encourage participation, what tools might be needed to perform analytics. Metrics. Okay, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to measure, to monitor, to understand the patterns of behavior within that community. So it's, whether it's social network analysis or Google Analytics, health checks, okay, these might be quantitative type measures. There's also qualitative measures you can do through things like polls and surveys and management reports. The, the community I referred to earlier on, the, the one in uh, local government, Every 12 months we run a survey of all of the members and ask them, have their needs been met? There's a set of questions, that, a standard set of questions that we ask. Um, actually, it's not part of this presentation, but I can make it available to people if they want to see the sorts of questions that we ask our community so that uh, we understand if it's meeting their needs. There might be business planning. Um, is this community practice um, aligned with business priorities, 
and that's one of the reasons that it may fail. If it isn't, then it's difficult to get sponsorship from the top because they will not see it as being aligned with what the business is trying to do or the service. So ensuring that there is a, an activity of, uh, around business planning. Professional development, that's your professional development, not the community. How do the, the facilitators and moderators keep themselves up to date with good practice? And they can do that by networking with other people, going to conferences, belonging to a special interest group, or whatever. But it's the professional development of the people that are managing this community. And then, boring for some, but important, it's the content management. How do we keep the knowledge assets, that's the documents, the links, how do we keep it all tidy? How do we ensure that we've got the right categories or tags to help people find that information? Somebody's got to do it. So managing the taxonomy, managing the frequently asked questions, that is the role of this uh, facilitator or moderator. Outreach. How do you attract more people into the community? In terms of actually getting the energy going within a community, it's really good to invite new ideas in. Um, a community of 20 or so people will soon get married on because after about six months they've spoken to each other, they've perhaps exhausted the issues. Inviting more people in will generate new ideas, new conversations. <coughs> and then this community management, which is the the things perhaps we normally associate with um, uh, an e-moderator or facilitator, and this is really connecting people, moderating the forums, um, doing, uh, putting out blog posts or comments on blog posts, um, making sure that there are comments uh, provided to people's blogs, um, rewards and incentives. I don't know if you do that, but you know, how do you know, identify those people have done something good and give them some reward? And quite often that reward is really just sometimes just mentioning them. It could be in a bulletin or a newsletter that Fred did this and the very fact that it's been advertised is quite often enough to reward people. So if you take that in its entirety, there was a lot of work there. And I've spoken to, I remember we had a, a meeting of, we had 10 e-moderators in a room and we asked them, what do you do? Because it, it, we, the people we chose were for communities that were really good, really active, really healthy. So we wanted to find out what the secret was of what they did. And to summarize that, that meeting, it really came down to hard work, that they said there wasn't really any big secret. It was enthusiasm for what they were doing. It was an understanding of the people in their communities and just hard work. And this is where I come back to my point of energy. The facilitator, the moderator, needs energy and enthusiasm to keep their community active. They need to believe in what they're doing. Just before, the, the, the other point I, I think I've made in the paper here, we, we do run training courses for e-moderators and facilitators. But it's one of those things that's difficult to train people. You can train people on in, in a pedagogical way, um, what they need to do in terms of writing a blog or connecting people. There are certain activities you can, you can tell people about, but to be honest, the really good facilitators, it's something about their personality. It's something that can't really be taught. You can't teach a person to be gregarious online. They are, either are or they're not. And a lot of our communicators have certain skills that we couldn't teach in the classroom. I thought this might be interesting. This is um, a chap called Tom Humbarger. And it illustrates what happens if you take the e moderator or facilitator out of the community. And you can see here, it's bumping along, but it's generally okay. Tom got made redundant, 
um, and had to nobody else stepped in to manage that community. Now once he once he left, over the previous 18 months he had attracted 4,000 members, and that was around about 55 new people per week. Once he'd left, that went down to 20 members per week. We used to have back here 1,300 um, accesses per week by people. That went down to 522, and we can see it's still going down. Um, and basically, the um, activity dropped off by over 60%. Now, I don't know whether that community still exists, uh, and you can see if you look at this here, it's gone down to a very small amount. So this illustrates that the facilitator or the moderator of a community does have a purpose, does have a role. And if you take that role out, then you can almost guarantee that community will fail. <coughs> so what sort of intervention strategies can we, can we look at? This sort of stepped approach illustrates the levels of engagement of a, of a new user. First of all, making a personalised inv invitation, either on the phone or send somebody an email, would you like to join this community, it's around a topic that we know that you're interested in, but this personal invitation. <laughs> Once they've joined, encourage your community to welcome them. Make, them, make this new person into the community feel welcomed and, and at home. They may, in any new environment, um, thinking of the digital platform, not quite know what to do, who to contact, what the forums are about. So give them some help, give them some pointers, suggest things that they can look at, suggest people that they might want to connect with. And if you do all of that, then essentially you've gone from a passerby to somebody engaged in that community. And the key thing about this, keeping this engagement is this space for them to have this collaboration. The space can be physical or digital. But if you haven't got that space, that you won't build that trust and you won't in, uh, ensure that you've got an active community. I can't remember if I mentioned those the last time I was here, a couple of years ago, but one of the engagement strategies that's proved very successful in the local government community are these hot seats. This is where we invite somebody in to pose a particular question to the membership, and it's usually run just through forum comments. Um, I think one of the, if you can get an expert in their field, um, if you can get a minister to come in, or somebody recognise a senior manager, get them to ask or pose a question and open the, the floor up, the virtual floor up to forum comments. Um, some of our facilitators, we moderators, are very brave, and on one occasion, uh, I guess you've heard of Peter Mandelson, but they have Peter Mandelson, who was an ex-Labour minister, he came in to talk about carbon footprints, I think, at the time, and uh, it was advertised, he was only there on, in the hot seat for two hours, but then we, that attracted <coughs> 2,000 people to come to the community and ask questions. So again, a way of bringing people in through an activity like a hot seat. Other things that you could do, uh, I don't know if you do it, with newsletters. I found these really important. And you can see on this example, look at all the blue lines, because what these are doing the facilitator or the moderator has identified certain nuggets of information, certain um, items of knowledge, which they're now publishing once a month. And each of these links draws that person back into that community to see what the forum was about. Because not everybody's got the time day in, day out to be in that community. So for those that can't be there, drawing them in through something like a newsletter will help people prioritise what they want to look at. So your e-moderator is acting as a, uh, a custodian, if you like, or uh, uh, identifying the, the good, hot topics. I'll just briefly go back to 
analytics, if you can implement something like social network, social networking analysis, that gives you even a deeper understanding about how your your community is working, because it will show you where all the connections are. If you have somebody out isolated here with only one connection, it might give you some prompt to go and ensure that they are connected to other people or invite other people to connect with them. On this particular one, we can see that Paul is obviously a crucial part of this community. What happens if Paul leaves that community? And these are the things to think about. So Paul needs to be looked after. Paul needs to be recognised as being a key person within this community. So what you're going to do, use a variety of different engagement strategies. Face-to-face -face meetings, or hot seats, or newsletters, regular newsletters. Use of blogs and polls and identifying what hot topics are and putting these hot topics in a prominent place in the community or making sure that they are uh, highlighted in newsletters. And what about the facilitator or the moderator? Where, where do they go to get help? Well, there's lots of places. Um, Community Roundtable, CP Square, I don't know if you've heard of those, but there's many more. There's, on, there's uh, a number of uh, places or groups on Facebook. Um, we've got our own community of facilitators. So I don't know if you've got something similar, but having a community of e-moderators or facilitators where they can share, oh, it's not as good. that's really helpful, having your own community where you can share best practice. So, to summarise, the point we're making, monitor the health of your community. And by doing that, you need to understand how that community is working. If you can use some analytics, some measures to give you some uh, quantitative data, and supplement that with some of the things like polls and forums, subjective ways of identifying is that community meeting the needs of its members. Once you start to do that analysis, you can start to pick out certain symptoms, i.e. no activity, people using email but not coming into the community. And there's various interventions that you can make. I've put some ideas in this paper that's in your pack. The facilitator and moderator can be the key to a successful and healthy community. And when I mentioned earlier on, it's different, we've got 1,500 communities, but only about 200 that I could consider to be healthy. If you look at those 200, they've all got very good facilitators and or e-moderators. And it's hard work. There isn't a secret, there isn't a, what we call a magic bullet. It really is hard work. If it was up to me, because I'm not very good at Facilitate. I, I, I'm a facilitator for one of the communities that want three people, and, and I'm terrible, I'm hopeless, I just, I just can't do it. Um, for those that can do it, um, I would only hope you're being properly rewarded, because your role is really, really important. And I think I'll finish with this point that started off with the bunnies and the energy. If you are setting up a, a, a community environment, Remember that the batteries are not included. The batteries are you, the facilitators, the, the community managers, the facilitators. You're going to provide that kickstart, that energy. You're going to make that enthusiasm known to the rest of the community. And by those um, little messages, you'll hopefully get that community talking together. And you can perhaps step back a little bit and with various interventions just make sure things are ticking along. And with that, uh, thank you very much for your attention and for listening. Thank you. Uh, is there any questions? Hay alguna pregunta? Hay preguntas? Ah, ni me gusta que siempre haces preguntas yo. Mira, pura pregunta.
no res de l'altre món. Una cosa que em va sorgint tota l'estona de treballar a més a més el dir que no hi ha bateries i no sé si són recargables les bateries, potser, no? Que... El temps, on és? Un moment. Sí. Sí. Em referia a una cosa que m'ha sortit al llarg de totes les ponències i aquí amb el clufo final aquest. Bé. I és? El tema del temps, la feina, la tasca de l'emoderador, tot aquest tema de la cama de tasques, han de sortir dintre les 24 hores de la vida d'algú, d'una persona que no és virtual, que és real. Llavors, com hem de viure, si hi ha alguna fórmula, la vida laboral dur, la vida personal, la vida social real dins les 24 hores i a més aquí aquest extra, no? Com sent que veus això? Una mica cap aquí. That role needs to be recognised as um, a, a proper role. It's not um, an extracurricular activity. It has to be part of your job. So there is time set aside to do that. But that's one answer. And, it, and I think it's making sure that managers understand the importance of that role so they're given time to do it. The other thing is, it shouldn't be done by one person. Um, In the communities that I've been referring to, we insist on a minimum of three uh, e-moderators or three community managers per community. That's partly because there's things like holidays, and you say you can't be there 24 hours a day. And it's not just those three, because the three will also encourage ordinary members to take on the role of e-moderator, if you can. Now, There's one example I can think of. There was a, um, we have a community of practice called the Social Media and Collaboration Community of Practice. And I was a facilitator for that. But there was always one person in the community membership that was answering lots of questions, that was uh, active in blogging. So I said to him, do you fancy being a moderator? He was not part of our organisation, he's external to the organisation, and he said, yes, you know, this, I'd love to do that. So it's encouraging people that might be not part of your organisation, but external, if they're good at answering questions, connecting people, ask them to help. So I said, I think the first answer is if you can get your managers to understand how important this role is, and that you need two hours a day or whatever, to do it, um, and it's not, you're not doing it as an extracurricular activity or as a favour to people, this is part of your job. That's really the answer to what you should be trying to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, alguna pregunta més? Algú més? Jo faré una pregunta, llavors. Mm. S'ha realitzat, eh, al començament de tot, deies que era molt important tenir l'objectiu molt clar quan, si ens toca la salut de la comunitat. S'ha realitzat de les comunitats que han fracassat quantes han estat per culpa o de no haver tingut un objectiu adequat o d'haver perdut el focus en l'objectiu? Perquè a vegades s'analitza molt la participació, es prima molt la participació i ens oblidem de l'objectiu final de la comunitat. Gràcies. Um, it is important, and the, the one thing, just remind me, what, we have a number of people who think that by having a digital platform, people are going to come in and instantly collaborate, and they're not. The first thing is, if there's a community already there, 
um, in, in, in the real world, people who are talking together on a particular topic. That's the topic, that's the purpose. So you identify first of all in, in the real world where the interest lies, and you invite them in, we've got a space here to have your conversations, and, and that becomes, the, and they've agreed to that purpose. Now over a period of time, that purpose may change, and, or they may have, in fact, have delivered what they intended to do. And there's two things on this. One is, don't be afraid of closing the community with some celebration. Ah, yes, well, we said that we were going to work together to produce a policy on adult social care. And we've done that. Here it is. Now, you can close the community with a celebration, publish what they've, they've done, and, that, and perhaps those people move on to something else. Or what you could also do is ask the people in that community, okay, well, we've done that. Is there something else that we want to carry on our discussions with? And so we change that focus. And the other, just the other thing to mention is we have some communities where it's difficult to identify a real purpose. The one that I mentioned about the um, social media and collaboration, it's a learning community. And we never know how to measure that very well because how do I know that people are learning from it? We only know because there are more people joining it. It started off with two or three people. I think we've now got about three and a half thousand people on there. And we know it's working, even though the topics change. So um, three or four months ago, we wouldn't be talking about Google+. Plus. Now we're all talking about Google+. Plus. So the, the sort of activities change within the community. But the ones that are most easy to identify, if you've got a particular purpose in terms of we want to write, um, we have some good policy documents, or writing a better way of managing projects that has some clear deliverables. Once that's delivered, then don't worry about asking the members, okay, we've done that, let's close that community down and go somewhere else and do something else. Thank you. Thank you. Volia felicitar el ponent en el seu, en el, com ha dit la Núria Vives, vam fer en el bloc Gestió del Coneixement 10 postos per a cada participant i en el de l'Estic d'ell vam pensar si posar-lo o no perquè era molt i molt ja, era pràcticament la seva ponència, vam fer una mena de síntesi, de resum, i en el comentari que vaig fer és més del que havien demanat. Què vol dir? 1.300 cops en el Regne Unit. Molta, molt, són moltes comunitats. El coneixement que s'està generant de la quantitat, de tota aquesta eh, mina de comunitat que estan creixent, que estan... és molt. A la qual cosa aquesta reflexió més avançada que Steve Day nos ha portat aquí té molt valor. Aprofito per dir que trobareu tota la presentació i aquest magnífic gràfic ja penjades al blog i les, les tindreu a, a la seva intervenció també penjada aquí una setmana, l'escrit penjat. Però la pregunta que volia fer és la següent. 200 cops saludables de 1.300. Jo aquesta m'ha tranquil·litzat, aquesta dada m'ha tranquil·litzat. Per què? Perquè vivim com un drama quan tenim una comunitat aquí, estem parlant de 21 a 22, és comunitat de pràctica i és un drama cada vegada que veiem que la interacció de la comunitat no arriba a un determinat nivell i estem patint dient què va passar, això s'acabarà en aquesta estructura que és eh, l'administració la, pública, estructura eh, eh, molt potent, s'acabarà pagocitant aquestes noves maneres d'interaccionar que tothom reclama també la pròpia estructura per renovar-se i per ser més eficient. Entonces, la idea és, i la reflexió és aquesta, a vegades surten, tenen èxit, tenen una funció i s'acaba aquesta funció, doncs hem de buscar una altra. La pregunta és, teniu problemes per trobar facilitadors i moderadors davant noves eh, problemes que voleu enfocar? I quina és la vostra política d'incentius? Teniu incentius que vagin més enllà de la eh, reputació, de la difusió, de la presència online d'aquestes persones? O els cuideu d'alguna manera? Feu trobades online per compartir? No sé, quina és la vostra manera de, de, 
de cuidar que estas personas que, que están de arriba y que están usando tanta intensidad y tantas horas de ingenio. Um, thank you, uh, Jesus, for that. Um, yes, we do have trouble, but the key thing is, what I've understood here, you already understand the importance of those roles. Now, a lot of people don't. Um, on the, I mentioned 200 out, so 1,500 that were successful. A lot of the other communities exist because they've identified nominally three moderators or facilitators. The people that have been nominated didn't even know what their role was. They didn't have any understanding. Now, if you can emphasize um, the importance of those roles when you set the community up, and, and even though we insist on having these three names, ensuring that those people understand what their role is, uh, and, and build that into all of your project plans as well. So you don't start a new community up unless you train the facilitators, they understand what the role is, um, and they've got that enthusiasm and understanding for the topic. And yes, it is difficult, um, and look at our failure rate, all of those communities because that fail, because we haven't um, insisted on the right attributes or insisted on the right people. And I go back to the point I made earlier on. How do you train somebody to be a good e-moderator or facilitator? It's really difficult. And, and we have these training courses, and people come into the training courses and go away thinking they know what it's all about. But there's a certain attribute, and I said this earlier on, skill with e-moderators or facilitators that you can't train. And I think the more that we recognize that as a skill, uh, and an attribute of people, and, and reward them, um, i.e. that it's not seen to be a purely administrative task, low pay, this is a really important role. And if you look at the private sector, um, if you look at what Virgin do, or Apple, or where they've got the communities, they have recognized the importance, they call it a community manager, that community manager there is to uh, promote the brand, um, engage with customers. They see that very similar way we talk about communities of practice. They recognize that as a very important role. And I think once you have recognized that as an important role, then you might start to get more and more uh, successful communities. But don't worry, if, if, if communities fail, as long as you understood why that is. Is it failure or is it the fact that it has come to its natural end of life? Um, or has it failed because the e-moderator is gone, they've uh, left the organisation and they've not been replaced? Then you know, managers really need to be, take responsibility for ensuring that that person is, um, or a new person is recruited. And on that one point I just mentioned, the, the work that I was doing for local government association, they've recently reduced staff by 60%. Um, there were 600 people made redundant. A lot of those people that were made redundant were facilitating communities and they haven't replaced them. So if I'm here again next year, I'll show you some graphs going like that of the communities that are failing now because they haven't uh, recruited replacements to, for those facilitators. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, Steve Ah, ya una pregunta más allá y después ya pasaré a, a Carlos Rodino. Gracias. Eh, Carlos, gracias. Hola. Eh, los profesionales, los, los, los community managers normalmente provienen de, de las áreas de la comunicación, del, del periodismo, como mínimo, en el nuestro país. La pregunta que le voy a plantear es que en muchas veces me ha surgido el, el dubte de quina serà la futura relació entre el community manager i la figura del, del departament de premsa habitual al que estem més acostumats. És a dir, eh, el community manager arribarà a substituir el, la comunicació més eh, dirigida, més vertical, amb la intermediació dels mitjans de comunicació que en, en l'actual moment assumeix els departaments de premsa tradicional. Seran dues funcions paral·leles, les dues subjectes a unes mateixes a directrius comunicacionals estratègiques de l'empresa o de la institució se solaparan, seran paral·leles, aquí és el meu dubte. Gràcies. 
Um, yes, very, very good point. And um, I think these are the issues that local governments are currently tackling because the traditional uh, communications department, the uh, dealing with the press, has been traditionally separate from digital communications, use of social media. And, I actually, and there's certain skills, you, you have to have certain skills to be a journalist, to, to deal with communications, and, and I, I think you said it in the question, I think the two things are starting to come together, where understanding of digital communications is just as important as understanding the, the printed word and how to do it. And, and departments that are starting to bring these two skills together and create a, what they want to call it, a, a community manager that has responsibility for the communications as well as all of the other activities. I think that's the, that's the way that we're going, that's the trend that I see going. Mm -hmm.